Thanks for joining me again for another episode. My name is Sean Egglestone and I am a registered dietitian and today we are going to be focusing on a very exciting topic. We are going to be talking about what diet did our ancestors eat and is there an optimal diet for health? Now I have some talking points off screen because there's so much that we're going to cover today. So let's jump into this. Our story starts around 20 million years ago with the rise of the apes. Now from around 20 million years ago to around 5 million years ago is really when there weren't any humans. It was just apes and they eat a diet that is 95% vegetarian with 5% of its calories coming from insects. Now it wasn't until around 5 million years ago that we see the rise of the hominid, meaning basically our, our current genus. Now, the first hominids were the Ardipithecus and the Australopithecus, and they were around around 5 million years ago to around 2 million years ago. And they ate mostly plants, fruits, seeds, nuts, um, the occasional lizard, so maybe some small game like that. And these, of course, are pre-Paleolithic ancestors. They ate a, a variety of fibrous foods, mainly plants, some meat, fruit, nuts, seeds, and fibrous tubers. Now, just before the Paleolithic era, we see the rise of Homo habilis around um, 2.3 million years ago, and they were around up until 1.5 million years ago. So really, Homo habilis is the first um, Homo genus that we see entering into the Paleolithic era. We see a cooling of the environment, a change in their landscape, and so some new feeding strategies needed to take place. And that's why we think they started to eat meat. But what did Homo habilis consume? They were mainly vegetarian, but they did consume some meat. Their diet was more closely related to Arthropithecus than it was to Homo erectus, and that's what we see around 2 million years ago is Homo erectus. What did Homo erectus eat? This is really the start of the Paleolithic era, around 2 million years ago. They definitely ate more meat than their ancestors. There's no question about it. Changes in landscape, the environment, um, physiological changes, all support um, that they did consume more meat than their ancestors, but they also ate a ton of plants, possibly two tubers. They look at toothware analysis. Um, we know that their diet was uh, broad and diverse. It wasn't limited to only meat. Now, it was unlikely that their diet was high in meat because with a meat-centered diet, the water intake demands would have been way too high than what would have been provided in the plains of Africa. Now, and it was unlikely to be fatty meat too. When you look at the game that's available in Africa, it's not fatty meat. Zebra is 0.5 grams of fat per 100 grams of meat. Compare that to venison, which is 3 grams to 4 grams of fat per 100 grams, and beef, 15 grams of fat per 100 grams. So zebra is 30 times leaner than are most um, consumed than beef, okay? Now, one argument is, well, we weren't meant to be uh, vegan because B12. We do know that the diets of uh, our ancestors, they had a lot of meat, uh, a lot of grit, a lot of dirt, a lot of um, film and, and environmental stuffs on their food, especially the food from the ground, these tubers, uh, that would have contained B12, we know from stable isotope analysis that Homo erectus did have an eclectic diet um, of grassy and non-grassy plants, meat, insects, and tough fibrous tubers. What can we say about uh, the diet so far before we talk about current tribal cultures and diets and uh, how can we answer the first question, what did our ancestors eat, okay? Our ancestors were predominantly vegetarian. For 18 million out of the last 20 million years, we ate a 95% vegetarian diet. We did eat some meat in the middle to the later half of the Paleolithic era, but it was not um, 
ate a substantial amount. It wasn't the majority of their diet. Oftentimes they fasted. Their success in hunting and scavenging was inconsistent and it wasn't necessarily a daily intake. We also know that they ate a ton of fiber, up to 100 grams per day, which would have helped bind cholesterol in their intestines, um, which is a benefit of uh, fiber. We would also note that there were physiological changes that um, occurred. It may have been the result of less grassy intake and fiber intake, and not necessarily because of their meat intake, um, but... Uh, we do see in their physiology that they retain most of what makes them vegetarian, okay? I have a list here. Where's my list? Now, when we look at their physiology, again, they resemble more of a herbivore or an omnivore physiology than they do of a carnivore physiology. They recycle cholesterol, which is a cholesterol is a compound that's absolutely essential in our cell membranes and because um, our predecessors, the apes, didn't consume any cholesterol because they're predominantly vegetarian, they have a we have a really good way to recycle cholesterol. Um, our jaws move side to side, just like our ancestors, which imply that we um, did a lot of grinding with fibrous plant foods, unlike carnivores whose jaws do not go side to side. They don't have the mobility in the temporal mandibular joint. Uh, our vision and our fingers are, we can pick up colors, we can uh, look at fruit, we can see things that are in season, and we're great at picking them. We're very slow. So there's a lot of physiological components of our ancestors that really made them better herbivores than they were carnivores. Um, that we don't make vitamin C. So we need plant foods because we don't make vitamin C. And again, we're, <clears throat> excuse me, we're relatively slow. So... Maybe if we look at our modern tribal cultures, we can get a better answer to the second question, which is what is the optimal diet? Because we know, know that our ancestors were predominantly vegetarian, a little bit of meat towards the last two million years, but again, a diet centered around whole plant foods. Now, when we look at uh, the Maasai tribe in Africa, a uh, study came out a long time ago that said that they have no rates of very low rates of cardiovascular disease and they eat meat and blood and fat and a lot of animal products and dairy, very little, uh, very little plant foods. However, uh, the original studies were very flawed because the average uh, participant was uh, 44 to 46 years of age, so they weren't very old. And they used EKG, which you can have a normal EKG and still drop dead of a heart attack. So, uh, and they exercise a lot. Their diet is fairly inconsistent in terms of like they did have some fasting and there were huge variations in their intake. And it wasn't necessarily consistent from person to person. So the diet um, analysis itself was pretty flawed. However, there were follow-up autopsies that were done on the Masai tribe members. And what they found in the autopsies was extensive atherosclerotic disease, fibrous plaques. However, what we think that was so protective against actually having a heart attack was that they had um, an increase in the, uh, the diameter of their arteries, which allowed the blood to flow, which compensated for their plaques. But by no means did they, they, they absolutely have uh, coronary artery disease. We can also take a look at the Eskimos, okay? Uh, again, original studies done, I think, in the 1975 area suggested that they had low rates of cardiovascular disease and people related it to the fact that they eat a lot of meat and fat. However, again, follow-up studies are showing that they have um, very similar um, heart attack uh, rates, uh, cardiovascular disease rates as um, a lot of older Americans and that uh, there's still diabetes, there's hypertension, and they're not as healthy as we once once thought. We can also look at Brazil tribes. Now, a lot of the tribes in Brazil, we find that they have been isolated up until the 60s or 70s, completely isolated from um, the rest of um, society. 
And what do they consume? They consume a diet centered around whole plant foods. They get a little bit of meat, but it's a small amount and it's fairly infrequent. They have to share with the rest of the tribe, but their diet does uh, contain a lot of fruits, a lot of um, leaves, as well as tubers, cassava, and, and other root vegetables. Now, there's also the blue zone areas that are very important that we should look at, okay? These are also isolated pockets. We're talking Sardinia, Italy, Arcaria, Greece, Okinawa, Japan, uh, Loma Linda, California, and um, Icaria, Costa Rica. And what we find in these areas, these are the longest living people in the world, okay? They're living to 100 or older with very low rates of diabetes, cancer, stroke, heart disease, and they have such a high quality of life as they age. What are they consuming? Overwhelmingly majority of their calories come from whole plant foods. They have some meat, they have some dairy, they have a little bit of oil, but the vast majority of their calories are coming from whole plant foods, meaning beans, whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, and they substitute, they supplement with meat. It does not make up the majority of their diet. Now, I got a lot of flack, if you will, on my last video about this concept that the carnivore diet is new, and it really is new because at no point in time from five to six million years ago onward did we ever follow as a species a carnivorous diet, and it's not even um, clear that we consumed a diet that even had the majority of its calories from meat. Another point to consider is this. When we look at studies that look at the benefits of whole grains and beans, these very high carbohydrate, low fat foods, what we find is that populations around the world that consume more beans and more whole grains live longer, have lower rates of cardiovascular disease, lower rates of diabetes. They typically weigh less and have better BMIs. So if we were meant to consume a carnivorous or a more animal-centered diet, then we would see potentially that the more meat and dairy products that we consume and the less grains and beans that we consume, the healthier we would be and the lower rates of chronic disease we would see. However, it's just not the case. We find that as you go from omnivorous diet to flexitarian to pescatarian to vegetarian and then down to vegan, we see a stepwise decrease in BMI, in cardiovascular disease, in diabetes, in many types of cancer, stroke, and dementia. So if these high-carbohydrate, low-fat foods are so bad, why are we seeing a mountain of research that shows that consuming these foods has a positive benefit? And when we look at current populations, the people that are living the longest, healthiest lives consume a diet centered around whole plant foods just like our ancestors. And of course, the majority of organizations today, we're talking Harvard, UC Davis, American College of uh, Cardiology, major organizations nationwide and worldwide are showing and supporting the need for a diet centered around whole plant foods with less refined carbohydrates such as white flour, less sugar, less oil, less meat, and more whole grains, beans, fruits, vegetables, and nuts and seeds. So we're just not seeing in our history that we followed a carnivorous diet. We're not seeing the support today that suggests that carnivorous diets or meat-centered diets or paleo diets are more beneficial. And there's no real major organization nationwide that is supporting the need for increase in meat consumption, especially at the expense of plant foods. If you have any questions, Post and leave comments down below. If you haven't checked out my website, seantherd.com, go over there. You can uh, email me questions. I have more informational videos. You can check out my recommended resources and frequently asked questions. Thanks, guys, for watching. Cheers.